Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, ready for the event. Associate Director Parhad, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call the station for voice check. Station, this is Roma Parhad from Stanford University. How do you hear me? Okay, I have you a little garbled, but mostly readable. All right, we'll get started and hopefully it improves. I'm here with our faculty director, Dr. Abbas Malani, and our Iranian study students at Stanford. I'm going to turn it over to our faculty director to say a few words, and then we'll get started with our questions. Salam alaikum karam. Abbas Milani hasam. Dari ramad. که از این فرصت تاریخی استفاده نکنم و هم شخصا از طرف گروه ایران شناسی دانشگاه و به گمانم از طرف هر زن و مرد ایرانی و هر انسان آزاده به شما خیر و مقدم و تبریک عرض نکنم در این حال دریغ هم آمد که زبان زیبای فارسی در فضا تن نفکن نشود و نام کسانی چون فردوسی و خیام و سعدی از گذشته و زنان پیشگامی چون شما در 150 سال اخیر از قررت العین و فروغ فرخزاد و سیمین بهبهانی گرفته تا شیرین عبادی، نسرین ستوده، نرگس محمدی و البته محسا امینی یادی نکنم. متشکر از لطفی که به ما کردید و گامی بزرگ که برای زنان و مردان جهان و ایران برداشتید. سلام مرسی منم خیلی خوشحال هستم با شما امروز حرف بزنم از فضا به استنفورد یونیورسیتی بذا شروع بشیم Well thank you so much uh, Jasmine uh, two people of Iranian heritage have ever made it to space and it's perhaps notable that both of them have been women uh, I was wondering if you have any messages for the Iranian women anywhere in the world who might be watching this or listening to you right now First, I think I would say, just just look, look at what we can achieve when um, we don't have barriers in our way, when we're supported and uplifted. Um, this is what we can achieve. Um, and I'll say what, what you're doing matters. And um, I uh, greatly respect those that sacrifice themselves to to make a better world for the future and to create those opportunities for the future um, girls and boys uh, of the world. That's, uh, this, is, this is how it should be for everyone, to have the opportunities where if you're willing to work for it, um, you can achieve great things. Hi, Jasmine. My name is Donna, and my question is, are there any principles or concepts rooted in Iranian culture that you integrate into your daily life? I would say something I've gotten that's, I think, very strong in Iranian culture that um, I like to think I've carried on is hospitality. Um, you know, for example, when I first moved to Houston and, and joined NASA, um, my home became a place where all my classmates who were new, uh, also new to the Houston area, would gather uh, and get to know one each other. Uh, and I think that's something that's very, uh, very Iranian culture to always, always be ready for guests and always welcome guests uh, into your home and of course to, to feed them while they're there. So I think that's something that has uh, stuck with me and, and that I absolutely love. Hi, Jasmine. My name is Armita and my question is, um, as an Iranian woman, you are an inspiration to countless people in our community um, and represent the high levels of achievement and excellence in the Iranian diaspora. I was wondering what are some of the role models or mentors that have impacted your journey? I would say, first and foremost, um, my family. Um, my, my parents left everyone they knew and loved. Uh, they left, you know, all the material things they had um, to go out into the unknown. Um, for my future, for my brother's future, you know, we weren't even born at that time. And they started from scratch and and worked their way up and while they did that they always when they could tried to help others and i think that was really uh, a really big influence on me and and my brother as well you know at, at a young age a lot of people um get steered the wrong way by the the people they hang out with and my brother from such a young age was very wise about who he chose to be around because those people influence you and they impact you. And I learned that from him. And I learned that, you know, uh, 
it's it's cool to be hardworking and it's cool to come across as intelligent. So I think I'd say first and foremost, my family. Jasmine, my name is Kevin Kadavi. Thank you for having us. Having a childhood aspiration to become an astronaut is common, but actually becoming one is incredibly rare. What motivated you to stay the course? What role did your family and friends, your heritage or cultural experiences play? You know, I would say I've been, I've been very lucky in that to me, something I like to pass on to others is, you know, there's there's the destination that you're trying to get to. And I've wanted to be an astronaut since I was very young in elementary school. But there's also the the journey you take to get there and the path. And uh, that that path is really important as well. And that should be something that uh, you enjoy. So for me, I was always lucky. I've always the things I've done, I've always been passionate about, I've always enjoyed, and that's what allowed me to excel in them. And I've also been very lucky in that I always had people who believed in me and people who supported me. And that then made me believe in myself as well and uh, actually think that something as improbable or unlikely as becoming an astronaut was actually possible for me. And, you know, the power of the mind. If you believe you can do something, you've got a lot better chance of doing it than if you don't. Hi, Jasmine. I'm Saul. My question is, how do you follow current events in international news from space? How do they affect your work? And how do you maintain hope for the future of our world? Man, that is a, a tough question. Um, you know, that's still something I'm trying to figure out, that balance. I think you can... You can become overwhelmed with following uh, current events or the news in, in a way that's not, uh, you know, not not really uh, helpful. Uh, but then you also don't want to have your head in the sand either, right? So, um, for me, I, I I try to maintain enough awareness of what's going on so that I have a good sense of what's going on in the world um, and what's impacting other people in the world. Um, but also I, I always try to bring it back to, and, and sometimes this is hard because you can get inundated with it with all the sources of news, but I try to think what, what can I actually impact? And maybe those are the things I should pay attention to uh, a bit more. Um, and then in terms of, um, you know, maintaining positivity for the future, uh, just being up here, like this International Space Station, uh, if you could see it with your own eyes, it is such a marvel of human engineering. And the fact that like, this is what we can do when we work together. And we are an international crew. It's an international partnership that has built this orbiting laboratory around space. So up here, it's really easy to maintain that positive positivity and hope for the future because I've seen firsthand what we can do. Hi Jasmine, thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Mobina and you know as someone who's achieved significant success you serve as an inspiration for so many Iranian youth with ambitions and aspirations who might be listening right now. What do you have, what advice do you have for those youth? First off, um, I would say good on you for, for having aspirations and ambitious aspirations. A lot of people are too afraid to even dream big. Um, and then next, what I'd say is, um, if you have ambitious aspirations and you're trying to achieve those, you 100% will fail along the way. I can't tell you how many times I have failed just about in every significant phase in getting to this point. I've had pretty major failures. Um, and so, it's, uh, it's how you respond to those and how you go on from those that's really important. And then the last thing I'll say, something that's really important, uh, bring others along with you. You should never be trying to push someone down uh, to bolster yourself up. If, if everyone is trying to uh, help one another achieve, uh, then we'll all get further. And I really believe that. Hi, Jasmine. I was wondering, what's an unexpected aspect of space exploration that you think people don't discuss enough or anticipate? Uh, how hard it is. Um, <laughs> I honestly, I don't think I even fully appreciated it. And I've, I've been interested in space since I was a little kid. Um, but you, you know, you've seen the the International Space Station has had humans on board it for nearly a, a quarter of a century. And all the things we've achieved, you kind of go, 
oh yeah, okay, human space exploration, not that hard. But then, uh, you know, starting to work at NASA, I started to realize more and more and just being up here, there are problems that need to be solved every single day to keep us living and working up here. And so then you start talking about missions going back to the moon and on to Mars. Uh, it's, it's extremely difficult, uh, especially when it comes to human exploration, um, to keep people living and working in, in this harsh environment of space. And that's just something I think um, a lot of people don't truly uh, appreciate. Jasmine, the success of the Apollo program was a pivotal moment for national unity and served as an inspiration worldwide. With the upcoming Artemis missions to put the first woman and the first person of color on the moon, do you believe they will spark a similar unifying effect? And how might their impact differ from those of the Apollo missions? I, I certainly hope so. I hope the Artemis missions um, are another spark that show people um, what we can do and, and the differences in how we're doing it. You know, first the mission, we're, we're going to the moon to, to set up base there and live and work there and learn what we can there. So then we could go on further, you know, probably to Mars and then eventually maybe even further from there. Um, but also the, the astronauts of the Apollo era are very different than if you were to just look at the, even just the seven of us on board the International Space Station right now, or if you look at the astronaut and cosmonaut offices, um, they look very different today. And uh, I think it's important uh, with what we do because this is work for humanity to be represent more representative of uh, of humanity and and of our differences, whether that's in ethnicity, religion, gender, all those things. Because um, there's power in those different in those different perspectives, and also the next generation should see. They shouldn't look and go, "Oh, I can't do that. Uh, those people don't look like me." Uh, I want them to look at us and go, "Oh, I can do that too." As an astronaut, how has seeing the Earth from space altered your views on life, meaning, and also environmental issues? I have to say, um, first off, looking at the Earth from this view is one of the most incredible things, probably the most incredible thing I've experienced in my life. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily changed my views. I think I've always uh, known how special and beautiful our planet is. Um, I think it is just like when you look at the earth from this view, it's just instantaneous evidence and uh, reinforces what I've thought my entire life. Um, and so I don't necessarily think it's changed my perspective. It is just reinforced that we need to take care of our planet. Um, Everyone I know and love is is on that planet, except for my crewmates here. I, I love them too. Um, and really, that's what we have right now. And it really is beautiful. Hey, Jasmine. So a question that's been burning in the back of my mind is, have you brought any chai with you onto the ISS or any other reminders of your home, family, and community? I did not bring chai, but... Uh, I have brought uh, a few different things. I've brought some Persian food. Um, I have to decide exactly when I'm going to break it out. I brought enough to share with my uh, crewmates so they can enjoy a Persian meal as well. Um, I'm expecting to go home in February, so I uh, don't expect to be up here for Noros, but just in case I get extended, I did uh, did bring my own version of a half scene for that as well. Um, so. Um, I definitely want to share those things, uh, uh, you know, and a bit of my culture with my crewmates as well. Jasmine, what was your first spacewalk like? What does the Earth look like from outside the space station? I could probably talk for an hour about the spacewalk. <laughs> um, I've, I mean, doing a spacewalk is the most just over the top thing I've ever done in my life. I. I couldn't, I don't know how to describe it, but being out there, one, you feel so, uh, so exposed. You're on the outside of space station and 
um, you are relying on yourself and your your crewmate, the other uh, EV crew member out there with you. I was out there with Laurel, uh, you to do the right things as you go. And then looking at the earth, I'll be honest, from out there, it's a bit overwhelming and uh, it's different for everyone. But um, I I look every now and then and I kind of just had to focus on what I was doing because I think I think you can actually hear me say as that hatch first opens, uh, I I think I just said, wow, because it's uh, it's just so cool to see that without anything between you and that view um, from low Earth orbit. So you mentioned you, you might not be there for Nauru's, but you'll be spending Yalda at the International Space Station. And I know your, your night will only be about 45 minutes, but I was wondering if you have any plans to celebrate. Yeah, that's a, that's a funny point. Not a very long night for us, uh, 45 minutes each. But um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I know uh, I can say with confidence we we won't have uh, any bonfires on station. That's definitely not allowed, but but maybe that's a good opportunity for me to, since I don't expect to be here for Norris, maybe that's a good evening for me to share. Uh, share uh, I brought Gorma Sabzi, so share Gorma Sabzi with my crewmates to celebrate. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us. It means a lot to our students and we know to Iranians all over the world, especially Iranian women. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much uh, for having me. I hope you enjoyed your time aboard the International Space Station. Have a good day. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event.